We are here in a very cold Washington, D.C. tonight for the president's State of the Union address. He is about to announce ideas for his final three years. So is he fed up with Congress? Will he go it alone? Here's ABC's chief White House correspondent, Jonathan Carl. From speech prep, President Obama got a taste of the frigid Washington weather. It's not just the weather that's cold. Obama has the lowest average approval rating of any president after five years in office. The White House sees tonight as a chance to get things back on track. The president has spent the last week refining his speech and practicing his delivery. You know, I think the tone's right. I think the framework's right. One of the big themes of the night, the president doesn't need Congress to get things done. It is always better when you have big bipartisan solutions in Congress. But the president has tremendous authority, and he's going to use every ounce of it here. Case in point, a push to connect 15,000 public schools, 2 million students, to broadband Internet using both private funds and money Congress has already appropriated. The president will also promise executive action to require higher fuel standards for trucks and to raise the minimum wage for those working on future federal contracts. But a warning from Republican Speaker of the House John Boehner, who told reporters today if the president tries to ignore Congress, he's going to run into a brick wall. We're not going to sit here and let the president trample over us. The president also hopes to inspire tonight. He and the First Lady have invited some genuine American heroes. Boston bombing victim Jeff Bauman and Carlos Eridanen, who helped save his life. Boston Strong personified. And Antoinette Tuff, the bookkeeper who prevented a potential elementary school massacre by talking a would-be shooter into surrendering. The White House has just released a few excerpts of the president's speech, and in these, you see a real note of determination and defiance. One excerpt saying, America does not stand still and neither will I, so wherever and whenever I can take steps without legislation to expand opportunity for more American families, that's what I'm going to do. That a message, obviously, Diane, right to Republicans who have successfully blocked almost everything he's wanted to get passed over the past three years. And we'll be watching what happens when he says it tonight. Thank you, John. And we turn now to co-anchor of Good Morning America, George Stephanopoulos. George, what's the big picture for everybody at home tonight? Big picture is the president's coming into this speech with the best economy of his presidency, far and away and the worst politics of his presence. He's off his bottom, but it's as, about as low as he can be coming into this speech. Congress, as John pointed out, is still against what he's doing, and the country's given up on all of them. They're fed up with everybody in Washington. He's got to do one thing tonight, convince the country that he can actually get something done, and that's why he's showing the determination John talked about. And we've been looking at the pictures over the years. All these years he'd been giving State of the Union speeches. As you look at him and think about him, where do you think he is personally tonight walking in that room? A little more gray. We see that for sure. And, and, you know, he's always been a measured, tempered guy, but I think you have more of that now than ever before. He comes into this speech tonight with a clear sense of what he's done, what he can do, and what he cannot do. A real sense of the limits of the presidency. We'll be watching together tonight. What everybody at home to know that George and I will be right here covering it all with our powerhouse political team, the president's State of the Union address beginning at 9 p.m. Eastern.